What's up guys, Jared with an I here. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, this channel is all about giving you the confidence to lean into a full-time career as a wedding filmmaker. So if you are into that sort of thing, it would mean so much if you consider liking and subscribing. Today, I thought I would go through the list of cameras that I feel are some of the best out there right now for filming weddings, for filming documentaries, really anything, because let's face it, the tools we have out there today are just incredible. They're so powerful. They're also really affordable. So I really wanna dive through my list and which ones that I feel are great options if you're looking for a new camera this year. So let's go ahead and dive into the first camera on the list. And that of course is gonna be the Sony a7S III or the FX3. And of course I'm starting here because this is probably my favorite camera that I've used for the last couple years. It's really powerful. It just has a ton of great features. It's reliable, it's versatile, it's ergonomically correct for all my office peeps out there, you get that. But more seriously, some of the specs that make this camera so great, of course, is full frame, the ability to shoot 4K 10 bit up to 60 frames per second, dual SD card slots, log with gamma assist, five axis in body stabilization. It is a low light beast. And of course my favorite is the fact that it's very lightweight and compact, which leaves a very minimal footprint on the wedding day. You are of course paying for the luxuries that this camera offers. And that price is starting at $3,500. But since this is my main go-to camera, I could of course justify making that initial investment. And there's not much to really talk about the FX3 because these two cameras are practically identical, albeit a couple of different features such as Cine EI. Both of these options are really awesome, great cameras to consider for wedding filmmaking. Second on my list is the Canon C70. Now, before I made the switch from Canon to Sony, this was one camera that I was highly considering and I almost pulled the trigger and went with the C70 over the A7S III. But I didn't because of a couple of different reasons. One was primarily the size. Of course, the C70 is a lot larger, a little bit beefier, heavier to haul around on an eight to 10 hour wedding day. The internal image stabilization wasn't really that great. I think Sony has a little bit better image stabilization when compared with this camera. And then of course the price point being a couple thousand dollars more, I just couldn't really pull the trigger on that. But it's still a great camera nonetheless, which is why it's on my list of best cameras for filming weddings. And that is because it has a Super 35 sensor. My favorite feature being the built-in NDs. Love them, need them, gotta have them. Come on, Sony, you got this. 4K 10 bit, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, Canon log two and three, dual SD card slots, up to 16 stops of dynamic range, time code capabilities, beautiful autofocus, beautiful color, of course, as it is with most Canon cameras. And the fact that this cinema camera does have image stabilization is pretty revolutionary considering it is the first cinema camera to actually have some type of image stabilization, which is pretty cool. Number three is the Panasonic GH5. Now I have to throw in a low budget option on this list because one, this camera is just timeless. It is proven to just outstand the test of time and it's still highly relevant in today's market. With the GH5, you can pick this camera up for less than $1,000 and it shoots 10-bit 4K video and even anamorphic video. I used this camera for years and I actually recently parted ways with it. It was really hard to say goodbye to this thing because it was such a beautiful camera that really served me well throughout several years of filming weddings. And if you are just getting started, this is one camera that I would highly recommend, especially if you don't have a ton of money to throw at a new camera. Because you are getting a ton of features, a lot of professional and really necessary features, especially when it comes to filming weddings. And these include dual SD card slots, dual recording, beautiful image stabilization, 4K up to 60 frames a second, 4K 24 in 10 bit, Pretty decent battery life. The only downside with the GH5 is it is micro four thirds. 
so it's not going to be great in low light. And autofocus is practically non-existent on this thing, so you will have to learn the art of manually focusing your shots and making sure that everything is dialed in. But I'll be honest, when I was navigating this camera on the wedding day, that really wasn't an issue. And for the price point, you can't really complain about what you're getting out of this camera. Number five is the Lumix S5 Mark II. Now, one camera that completely changed the landscape and made it increasingly difficult to choose camera systems was the release of the Lumix S5 Mark II. And their introduction into the world of phase detect autofocus, which was pretty groundbreaking when this camera released because this was the first time a Lumix Panasonic camera had reliable autofocus. And that was really one of the biggest missing links in the past when choosing Lumix versus Sony versus Canon is you were pretty much always sacrificing autofocus. But now you get full frame 6K recording, a variety of 10-bit recording modes, pre-installed V-Log, which is really cool because with the GH5, you actually had to buy this separately. So it's cool that they actually included it inside this camera. You also get dual image stabilization at up to six and a half stops, really powerful video capabilities in such a lightweight and compact frame, hybrid functionality for capturing photos, and my favorite part about this entire system is the price point. This camera comes together for $1,700, which again is honestly a steal when it comes to everything that you're getting inside this camera and it makes it incredibly difficult to choose Lumix, Sony, Canon, Fuji, Nikon even, all the camera manufacturers. They're making it really difficult for us. Now, I can't make a best camera for weddings video without mentioning one of my favorite cameras that I've used this year, and that of course is the Sony FX30. My main love for this camera is the ergonomics, the functionality, the ease of use, and of course the price point. I talk at length about this camera in one of my past videos. If you are interested in checking that out, you can find it here. But ultimately, Sony has really been killing the game with cameras that help you create and capture moments with ease and simplicity. And it's just the reliability factor that I love so much. It's a huge reason why I went from Canon R6 to the Sony A7S lineup. But of course, some of the features that are so beloved with the FX30 is of course the dual recording, 422 10-bit recording modes, Cine EI, which was one of my favorite features, user LUT and timecode support, dual base ISOs, full pixel readout from a 6K sensor, five axis in-body stabilization, accurate autofocus, and the $1,400 price point. Now, of course, a few cons of the FX30 is the battery life and the fact that it's not that great in low light. But I think weighing apples and oranges, considering all that you're getting for the price, those things can kind of be overlooked. Next up is what I'm coining the comeback camera because of who it's made by, and that, of course, is the Nikon Z8. This camera definitely turned a lot of heads, mine included, because the stereotype of Nikon is that who in the world would use Nikon for video. But looking at the specs of this camera, I think that mindset is uh, about to change. Now, most of the groundbreaking features of the Nikon Z8 is kind of overkill, in my opinion, especially for weddings but it's still pretty incredible that these exist and the capabilities that you have with this camera is just pretty insane, which is why it deserves to be on the list. For one, you can record 8K 12-bit internally up to 60 frames a second. Let's just wrap our head around that one for a second. 8K 12-bit raw internally up to 60 frames per second. I know, you have five axis image stabilization, full frame sensor, dual SD card slots, Z-Log, hybrid functionality, and in my opinion, everything you need to film or photograph a wedding. And then comes the price, which honestly, for all that you're getting inside this camera, it makes sense. And in my opinion, I don't think it's overpriced. And the Z8 is priced at $3,700. And so when it comes to deciding, do you go Nikon? Do you go Lumix? Do you go Canon, Sony, Fuji? You have to really look at does it make sense for me to completely switch systems? I can see people who are going from photography who have used Nikon consistently. The Z8 is a very welcomed upgrade. And especially from a video perspective, if you're getting into video from photography, 
this is going to be just a godsend for you. Now, do I think that most filmmakers are going to go from Canon to Nikon or Sony to Nikon? I don't know because I feel like that stereotype is still so present and prevalent that it's like, hmm, do I really want to go Nikon? Do I want to be that guy? But then again, it's like, look at all that you're getting inside this camera. It's pretty revolutionary. So I think it is very valid if you wanted to make the switch to Nikon. I wouldn't fault you at all. Might judge you a little bit. And last but not least is probably the most accessible camera that you can use to film weddings. And that is your iPhone. It's no secret that iPhone filmmaking is increasing in popularity. And especially with the release of the iPhone 15 and Apple Log, this is becoming such a sought after medium and one that people are really gravitating towards because of its accessibility, ease of use, and the quality that you're able to achieve in such a small device. And I believe the quality and accessibility that you're able to achieve with your iPhone is why it deserves to be on the list of the best cameras for wedding filmmaking. And one of my favorite filmmakers that I actually interviewed earlier this year, her name is Savannah from A Girl in Her Phone, and she just boldly and confidently navigates an entire wedding day with just her iPhone, which is still something that I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around, but she does it, and she does it beautifully. And couples are paying her. They are paying her to film a wedding with just her phone. It shows that it truly does not matter what we use to create, as long as we do it with heart, with intention, and with a servanthood mindset, we can really capture weddings with just about anything. And honestly, with the way that technology is today, we have just reached so many new heights in the world of video creation and accessibility. So what do you guys think out of this list? Which one is the best camera for filming weddings? Did I not even mention one that you use that you feel is the best? Either way, I'd love to hear from you. So drop your answers below. And until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories. Peace.